Hello and welcome to Dateline Lagos on Channels Television. I'm Ayo Tunde Balogun. Coming up on the program, Lagos State Government holds National Youth Symposium to celebrate Deputy Governor's 60th birthday and Lamata holds National Conference on Sustainable Urban Mobility. As part of the 60th birthday celebration of the Lagos State Deputy Governor, Kadri Hamzat, the state government engaged the youth on leadership role and the Deputy Governor assured the Nigerian youth that in spite of challenges facing the country, there is hope for the young people. Now, the Deputy Governor who was speaking at a National Youth Symposium to mark his 60th birthday urged the youth to take advantage of opportunities available to them and become self-reliant. Form to be able to grow bigger or even start at all. To Victoria to Garden to Conference and Event Centre, Alao Saikeja, is fully occupied by some youths in different groups NYC core members, senior government officials, academic scholars, among other guests who are here for the National Youth Symposium organized by the state government in commemoration of the 60th birthday of the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Kadri Hamzat. <laughs> The celebrant who has just stepped into the sixth floor is here alongside his wife, Mrs. Oluremi Hamzat, to lecture the youths on the opportunities that are bound for them. The former vice chancellor of the Lagos State University, Professor Olare Wajufagbun, leads the conversation on guiding the youth on the path to self reliance. Nigeria in these times are at a crossroads, and the decisions we make today will not only shape the nation's future, but the lives of millions of young Nigerians. Traditional pathways to success are becoming elusive. Employment opportunities are shrinking. Our educational systems are strained. Global competition has become much more fierce. The notion of self-reliance has become a critical survival strategy which means you are not looking at any system. You are not looking at any individual. You are looking at your own inner resourcefulness. You are looking at your own resilience to take you through. You are telling yourself that I'm on an island where there is no survive. Death is not an option. Life is the option, and I will get through it. That is what you want to do. That is what we want to train our youth to be able to achieve. And that is what this event is all about. Let me introduce an exemplary leader whose story embodies the power of education, perseverance, and a passion for societal development, Dr. Kadri Obafemi Hamzad. His leadership in the Ministry of Science and Technology during the Tinumbu administration and his innovative approaches help foster a culture of transparency and efficiency in governance. These principles have continued to shape his leadership style and unwavering commitment to serving Lagos State. Perhaps the most defining trait of this great man is his passion for a society where every young person has the opportunity to thrive, a Lagos that fosters self-reliance innovation and entrepreneurship. Next is a panel session, including the State Commissioner for Agriculture and Food Systems, Youths and Social Development, the Executive Secretary and CEO of Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, among others who engage the youths on numerous opportunities available for them in agriculture, tech industry, and in other fields. Under our Lagos Agripreneurship Program, which we run every year, we continuously train the youth. We train those who don't have a background at all, but we are now trying to keep a focus on those who have agricultural backgrounds in our universities. It doesn't negate the fact that we still continue to take on those who have the passion for it, but we want to start to put a focus to this particular group of people that have otherwise been neglected. Uh, we train, we mentor, and we also support. All of our initiatives in the past, we continue to support production, we continue to support processing, but we do not follow our investments to market, meaning at the end of the day, you pump in so much money, but you don't see the returns on investment. And what I mean by returns on investment is not the money coming back into the state government coffers, but the money coming back to you. 
in terms of the average disposable income you have available. We give a lot of support, but we don't see that translating into price reductions in the market, which is why we are pushing aggressively to develop more food hubs so that we can start to trail where our monies have been invested. As a youth, to survive and to thrive, you need to be confident, you need to be bold, and you need to believe in yourself. Because the worst thing anybody can say to you is no, and no cannot kill you. So the fact that we have that open door policy opens us, opens me to conversations, and those conversations translate into actionable items. And just to mention a few, uh, you said, uh, you said uh, that's USAID, we're in partnerships and we're convers in conversations with them, they're in four out of our um, 35 youth centers, empowering and giving back to the youths. Uh, UNICEF, um, we continue to have roundtable conversations. When you bring stakeholders together to a table and you align your actionable items around the SDGs, then it gives you that platform and opportunity to be able to align those conversations to give the benefits uh, to the youths. Before I talk about the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund that offers in, uh, single digit interest uh, loans at 9%, you don't need collateral. But also talk about partnerships. Sometimes, some of the things that we try to do, we can't do it alone. Why can't you invite other people, pitch your ideas, get capital in terms of equity rather than debt? Uh, once you do this, you'll be able to move at a very, very uh, high speed. Uh, other areas of uh, business support that I see within Lagos State, especially also lies in the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund, where they offer free voucher pro uh, programs to early startups, uh, where you can uh, go and set your business up at very, very reduced cost. There's also the Idea Hub program, uh, especially for early stage uh, businesses where they can incubate their ideas. And I think the last one is that we all need to focus not on the conventional, but on the technical and the traditional uh, uh, work, like technical skills, plumbing, carpentry. We feel that these areas are left for people who are not educated, but it's not true. If you are the best plumber in this state today, the governor will be looking for you. The deputy governor will be looking for you. I know what individuals will be looking for you because the excellence that comes from your job will command value. Other panelists also ask the youths to invest in themselves in order to it's become what they you. desire in future. Now, you have to be positive. I would offer you that. Um, understand that sometimes you might fail. There's something calling failing forward. Um, the thing that sometimes we don't get mm -hmm. is failing temporarily is actually part of the process of passing. So when you do something and you don't do it right, continue just like we heard from our sister down there about her journey. It's very instructive. Try your best. Try, try. Be persistent. Don't give up. Focus. Get a skill. Get advice. Have a good mindset. If you feel, get up. As long as you are getting up, you are on a journey. It's a journey. You are young. It's a journey. It's not going, it may not be successful the first time. So that's the first thing I'd like to offer you. The second thing is leverage networks and build relationships. Um, anybody who has read the story of our dear president will understand the power of relationships. How he's built his relationships over the course of his career. As a matter of fact, if you want to study how to build relationships, you should read about his life. Building relationships today as a young person, some of those relationships will come back to pay dividends later on in life. Prior to my starting Zeni Crafts, prior to my even acquiring the skill of leather works, I asked myself, why do I want to do this? And I said, I answered myself, I want to build a globally represented brand, a globally respected brand, a brand that will transcend racial boundaries, a brand that will bring pride to Nigeria, that will bring pride to Africa, and that will bring pride to the blacks all around the world. A brand that will stand amongst the best and even stand out amongst the best. That has been my focus and that has been my driving force. So as an individual, dream big, go after our dreams and you'll achieve it. Of course, we have some challenges, we have some limiting factors, which is due to some financial constraints, which has made it a little bit difficult for us in acquiring cutting-edge technology and machines. 
But that doesn't mean we are not going to get there. Gucci started somewhere. So Zeni Kapti is starting somewhere. And we are going to get there. So if you are here today, if you have a vision, please go after it. When we are talking about financial freedom, so I want to ask you, who want to be financial, financially free? So who want to do their work? Thank you. So everybody wants to be financially free, but we don't want to put on the work. So when we are talking about financial freedom, we are talking about, we need to understand financial literacy. And they didn't teach us in school at all. So confessional um, um, school, they didn't teach us about financial. That's why we are now making money. So when we're talking about financial literacy, you need to understand how money works. The rules and the law that governs money. So number one rule of money is money is not meant to be spent. I know what you're talking about. You don't know who I be. I know. <laughs> so money is meant to be invested. That's number one rule. But I could say in Nigeria, we violated this rule so much. And that's why the money is not in our economy. And number two, we need to understand the difference between assets and liability. So to understand assets and liability, we need to understand cash flow. And to understand the cash flow, we need to understand investment. And I could tell you, the best investment you can ever do is investment that invests in yourself. And the reason is being, so it's what you're becoming, not the money anyway. You, so that, that's why you can see some millionaires, uh, they go bankruptcy and they make the money back because um, they invest in the brain, the mindset and all that. So that's why it's very important. The Lagos State Deputy Governor encourages the youths to be hopeful for a better country because they are in a position to drive the positive change that Nigeria needs. No doubt in my mind that the choice of this topic is very relevant and I think the timing is also very important. So why do I say the timing is important? This we all know is a pivotal moment in the history of our country, Nigeria. We are all dazed by the economic challenges of our times. Many seem to have lost hope in the sheer creativity and the ability of human minds and the amazement of transformative power of science to traverse or reverse what is seen as a negative trend. So the question is, how do we leverage on them? Instead of us complaining, how do we motivate the youths? In other words, in administration, the youths have always been at the table when decisions that affect the lives of over 22 million negotiations are made. Little wonder, somebody said here, and I think it's uh, uh, the lady that said she Jakwada. A lot of people who in Jakwada, they are coming back. You know why? Because, not because they are homesick, but because they realize that the challenges of today are actually global. So I must salute the courage of our young people, your resilience, your tenacity, as well as your passion for this country. So are there challenges? Yes. There are problems, socioeconomic problems, unemployment, insecurity in some parts of the country, national disasters fueled by climate change and others. Are they insurmountable? No, not at all. Are there opportunities in those challenges? Sure, there are many. But only the highly designing and tentative youths will see them. I therefore encourage our youths not to be deterred by these challenges around them. I admit that it can be intimidating, and that, but I know that tough times don't last. Only tough people do. And as such, I encourage you to focus and continue to plan on because you get to that de destination with your mental health intact and your success and prosperity assured. The take-home message from the National Youth Symposium is for the youth to emulate the leadership skills of Dr. Kadri Hamzat, become self-reliant, and take up roles that will shape the future of Lagos State and the country at large. <laughs> From Youth Symposium to the Lagos Metropolitan Transport Authority National Conference, where the state government has urged stakeholders in the transportation sector to forge a strong partnership with the government in order to scale the transportation sector in the state. 
Speaking at the National Conference on Sustainable Urban Mobility organized by the Lagos La Mata, the State Deputy Governor, Kadri Hamzat, says the private sector must foster partnership with the government to accelerate progress in the transportation sector. It's the maiden edition of the Lagos Metropolitan Transport Authority National Conference on Sustainable Urban Mobility at Eco Hotel and Suites, Victoria Island, Lagos. You can transit from one mode to another. The Lagos State Deputy Governor, Kadri Hamzat, State cabinet members and stakeholders in the transportation sector are here to deliberate on how to make the sector perform better in a digital age for sustainable development. This gathering definitely marks a pioneering event in our collective journey toward building a more sustainable, inclusive and climate resilient urban transport system, not just for Lagos, but also for the whole of Nigeria as a whole. We're part of a nation, we're part of a country. When one grows and the other doesn't grow, then the nation doesn't really grow. And the vision of LAMATA is to ensure that we all grow together. This conference will serve, and this is our vision, as a knowledge hub for policymakers, planners, engineers, researchers, operators and other key stakeholders at both national and subnational levels in Nigeria. The 2024 Maiden Conference, the theme that we have for it is implementing safe, inclusive and climate resilient urban transport in a digital age for sustainable development. This captures the breadth of challenges and opportunities we face in the transport sector today. It speaks to the urgent need for solutions that prioritize safety, equity, and sustainability, while embracing the power of digital technologies that can transform our system and hopefully elevate our cities. In Lagos, vehicular emissions have emerged as a critical global challenge, a critical issue the state government is planning to solve as soon as possible. In 2021, transportation ac accounted for the largest share of greenhouse gas emissions, contributing 28% of the total. These emissions primarily result from burning fossil fuels in our vehicles, ships, trains, and planes, adversely impacting both people and environment through air and noise pollution, as well as carbon monoxide em emissions which have both direct and indirect harmful effects. Climate resilient urban transportation is essential for sustainable development, particularly as cities grapple with the growing impacts of climate change. Some key strategies and policies currently implemented under consideration in Lagos State include electrification of transport, which is the transition into electric vehicles EVs and promoting electric public transport can significantly mitigate greenhouse gas emissions. The multimodal transport system, which encourages its use of diverse modes of transport, such as buses, trains, bicycles, and walking, which will reduce dependence on private vehicles and decrease emissions. Thirdly, climate resilient infrastructure which involves the construction of infrastructure capable of withstanding extreme weather events such as floods and heat waves is very vital. This involves designing roads, bridges and public transport systems that are durable and adaptable. Representatives from other states highlight the initiative put in place by the government to improve transportation with the use of alternative energy. Lagos and Kano share some striking similarities in terms of population with the latter leading in the urban transport, Kano is following closely with the establishment of independent ministry and some agencies to champion urban transport reforms. Let me, however, indicate that transportation is the lifeblood of our cities and, crit and critical component for sustainable development. In Kano State, we recognize that effective mobility is not merely about moving people from one point to another. It is about creating accessibility, safe and efficient transportation system that respects and enhances the lives of all citizens, 
particularly those in vulnerable communities. In the spirit of inclusivity, we must strive to ensure that our transportation policies and systems are designed to serve our one, regardless of age, ability, or socioeconomic status. It is imperative that we break down the barriers that prevent equitable access to transportation, thereby fostering social inclusive and economic growth. We have constructed an international cargo airport in the state that is located close to the biggest market in the West Africa on the Jamaican market and will be ultimately linked to a proposed rail line. Um, after I will show you the, the feasibility study we've done for the rail, very soon it will be on board. Our intent is to make the airport the hub of the other sectors uh, of, the, of the transport system in the state. You know, in, you can agree with me that the air transport is currently the safest, uh, but because we're, we're investment friendly state, we want people to be coming in and going out, and you know, a number of people also travel a lot. So we want to make the airport the hub. So the airport will be strategically linked to the rail, to various roads, and even to, to the water transport. It's also an opportunity for the Lagos Metropolitan Transport Authority to educate the gathering on how the transport services operate. We have over 80 motor parks in Lagos, according to our bus route network, and all the unions are present in all these motor parks. You can see these motor parks are one of the QBC corridors that we currently want to reform. We are going to start with eight QBC corridors, and after this, we can now move to the entire Lagos. So in conjunction with MOT, we have been engaging with these two big unions on how to plan, on how to restructure, on how to reform and operationalize the QBC corridors. Now, what is QBC? So the QBC corridors, they are like um, a corridor, corridors that interface with the existing and operational BRT corridors, also the proposed one, they integrate with the LRT lines, that is the blue and the red lines. Out of the 13 QBC corridors, eight has been shortlisted based on uh, multi-criteria analysis. And basically, the key component of establishing this QBC corridor is about traffic and road implementation. Water transportation under the supervision of the State Waterways Authority is also not left out. The general manager of LASWA speaks on the local government areas connected by water and transporting commuters safely. 15 out of 20 local governments are accessible by water in Lagos State, so it's a no-brainer of why we shouldn't be moving people en masse by the waterways and all the other information had been passed across before. So this is just some, some data for you to um, chew on. 57 routes, uh, but we have 10 major priority routes which we, which we tend to focus on. As we speak today, Lagos stands um, as the safest state in terms of water transportation in Lagos in, in the whole of Nigeria. And it's not because we wished it or we only prayed, but we also invested heavily in ensuring safety. So in previous years, the, we used to have a, an average of 10 to 12 incidents every year on the waterways. But as we speak, last year we had only one singular incident. The two years before we had only two. This year, unfortunately, we had two. But it was as a result of um, some mistakes, even though not directly by us, but because we are still regulators, we will take responsibility. But ever since the first two we had beginning of this year, we've not had any again this year. And it's because why? One, we've deployed technology. So we have the first of its kind in sub-Saharan Africa, a waterways monitoring and a data management center where real time we're seeing all what is going on in our waterways and we're also gathering data. You heard someone speak about data initially um, and how important data is able to make informed decisions. Also, of course, we have the Kauri card, which is also working on our water transportation system. And we have a drone technology, which, can, which we can use to monitor either underwater or above the water as well. 
The deputy governor emphasizes the government's plans towards achieving sustainable multimodal public transport system in Lagos. As cities around the world continue to expand, the demand on our transportation system grows ever more acute. Here in Lagos, one of Africa's most fast-growing urban centers, we have felt this pressure very profoundly. Population growth, urban, rapid urbanization, and economic development have placed increasing strain on existing infrastructure, often leading to traffic gridlock, some issue with environmental issues, and social inequalities. Lagos State Government is actively implementing programs and policies aimed at reducing reliance on fossil fuels and combating the harmful effect of greenhouse gas emissions. Our administration is exploring clean urban transport solutions that will incorporate the use of hydroelectricity, CNG, biomass, geothermal energy, and even renewable energy sources such as wind power and solar energy into our public transport system. Towards sustainable urban mobility, LAMATA is currently implementing two pilot demonstration schemes on CAG buses and electric buses. This transition will reduce emission and create a cleaner, quieter, and healthier environment for us in Lagos. Sustainability, therefore, is not just about reducing carbon footprints. It is also about ensuring that our transport system are inclusive and accessible to all citizens, irrespective of class or status. We cannot make progress in urban mobility if our most vulnerable citizens, the elderly, people with, living with disability, and our children are left behind in whatever we do. So historically, urban transport systems have failed to adequately serve vulnerable populations. Public transportation can often be unsafe, unreliable, and difficult to access for vulnerable groups, reinforcing social inequalities. So at this conference, we have a unique opportunity to address these challenges heads on. This is the very first national conference organized by LAMATA, and the Lagos state government says it will continue to leverage on technology, work with the private sector to improve transportation in Lagos state. And that's the program for this week. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Ayotunde Balogun. Remember, be the best you can, obey all state laws, live a healthy life, and most importantly, please stay safe. Till next time, it's bye for now.